In last lesson we discussed about the counting calculation using the for loop. In this lesson we will discuss about the sum and the product that we can perform using the for loop. Suppose we have a task to take 10 numbers from the user and we have to find the sum of all those 10 numbers. So I will first take the 10 numbers from the user. But I have to find the sum of those entered numbers. So the approach will be very similar to what we did in case of the counting calculation. So here I will declare a variable to hold the sum of all those numbers and I should declare that before the start of the for loop. I can name it as anything for example sum but remember sum is also a built in function of the python which we will be exploring later on. I can use this variable sum here because I don't have to use the sum function of the python in this program but I will choose some other name for example simple s and I should set the value of this variable as 0 because no number is added by the user on line number 1 yet and then inside the for loop when a number is entered by the user I should add that number into the sum variable. I can use it like that. So you can see that every time the user will be entering a number, that number will get added into that s variable. So at the end of the for loop execution, we will have that sum stored in the variable s. I will suggest you strongly to run this code step by step and you will see the whole working of this program. But I will simply run it over here. I'm entering all these numbers and the sum is displayed. Recall that we did a task in one of the previous lab sessions to find the average of 5 subjects marks. We declared 5 variables to take in the 5 values from the user and then we added those values to find the average of those. What if you have to do it for the 10 subjects? You will declare 10 variables for that and what if you have to do it for different students? For example, if there is one subject and suppose there are 50 or even more students, so you will have to declare those 50 variables for that. But you can see, to find the average, we need the sum of those values. So instead of declaring all those variables, we can have a for loop and we can have that sum of those entered values. And then we can simply divide that by the total number to find the average. So I'm doing it for the 10 students. Outside the for loop, I have to divide that sum by the total number so that I get the mean value or the average value. But you know even if they are 100 students, I just need to change that 10 of the range function to 100 and of course on that vn over there. So here is the task of the lab manual which says that you have to take the 10 positive integers from the user and then you have to display the sum of the even numbers entered and the sum of the odd numbers entered. How many even numbers user will be entering and how many odd numbers user will be entering, we do not know that. You need to take 10 numbers as the input from the user using the for loop of course and then you will apply the check on the number if it is even or odd and you should have two sum variables, one to hold the sum of even numbers and one to hold the sum of odd numbers. Both will be zero before the start of the for loop and on the number entered by the user you will apply a check if it is even or odd and accordingly you will add that number into the respective sum variable. The task 2 is about the average of the 5 subjects which we have already discussed. Now is the task 3. Here you have to take one number from the user with the assumption that it will be a positive integer and then you have to see if the entered number is even number. You have to display the sum of all even numbers from 0 till the entered number. And if the entered number is an odd number, you have to display the sum of all odd numbers starting from 1 till the odd number entered by the user. For example, if user enters 9, you have to display the sum of 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 which is 25 and you have to display this particular format of the output. 
then there is one additional feature that you can add in this program that you have to display the sum in this particular format. I will discuss how you can achieve this but not on this particular task but I can have a simple task that for example a variable is having a value 5 and I have to display like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 equal to the sum. So first I can declare a sum variable as for example s equal to 0. Let's first verify that if 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 15 or not. It is 15. Now to display that in this particular format, the different numbers are in variable i. So I can display that i using the print statement, but I have to display a plus sign as well. So better will be if I specify that plus sign using the optional input argument end. So this plus will be displayed with the i. And the second thing which happens is that the next print statement will be executed from the same line. And actually we need that. So if I run that, you can see that plus is being displayed after each of the number. But we do not need that last plus sign after the 5. So what we can do for that? Think of the logic which can be very simple. That in the loop iterations, when it is the last iteration, we should not display this plus sign. And rather, we should display the equal sign for that case. So the logic is very simple that for all iteration there will be the plus sign with the end optional input argument and it should be equal sign on the last iteration. On last iteration the value of i will be equal to x. So I can do it like that. And now you can see that plus is being displayed with each number except the last one and on the last number there is an equal sign being displayed. Now what we need next is that we need to display the sum after that equal sign. For that I will simply uncomment this line number 10 which is outside the for loop and this print statement will be displayed on the same line because of the end argument which we are using inside the for loop. And now we have the desired output. Let's change this x to 10. And we have the desired output. The next calculation that we will discuss is about the product which we can achieve using the for loop. So again the simplest task can be taking numbers from the user and we have to display the product of those numbers and it will have exactly the similar logic as we have in case of the sum of the numbers. So now instead of sum we have to find the product of the numbers. So here I have s equal to 0 on line number 1 which is the sum variable. In case of product I will have a variable for the product. And you should easily understand that it should not be 0 but it should be 1. And then inside the for loop, I will multiply each of the number entered by the user with the product variable. And at the end of the for loop, I will have that final product of all numbers entered by the user. Again I will suggest that you should run these programs in step by step mode. So now here is task number 4 of the lab manual. The task says that you have to take a number from the user and you have to display the factorial of that number. Although there is a function available in the math module which we can use for the factorial of the number. But for this task you will not use that function. You have to create your own function. So the function name will be fact for the factorial. It will have one input argument. For simplicity, let's assume that the input argument will always be a positive integer. Now what is the factorial of a number? For example, factorial of 5 is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The 5 is just an example. In your function, it will be your input argument. So what you need to do is, you have to write a for loop that will generate a number starting from 1 till the enter number or from the enter number till 1. And you have to find the product of all those numbers. And finally, you will return that product. That's all from this lesson. Thanks for watching.